Before I came to New Zealand, uh, I worked for a while in Australia, and we actually had our own company and uh, tried to, or not tried to, we sold our own products. Uh, we developed our own products, and from this experience, uh, I can say I learned a lot about finances, uh, time to market, commercialization, and IP. So we had to time our product uh, launches and product development very much so that it fitted in with the environment. We had to uh, keep our finances under tight control. We had to uh, operate closely with our clients and uh, satisfy the needs of our clients. And also we had to understand and uh, consider the issues of IP, patenting and uh, similar aspects. And from that, well, I learned a lot and now the next time what to do better, what to do, what not to do and which issues to avoid. I really enjoy uh, my students uh, completing their PhD and then moving on to commercial environments and succeeding there and uh, I also enjoy when they actually come back to New Zealand and a good example is one of my students working on uh, quality assessment of biological products uh, in this case agricultural products a large component of his work was uh, scientific software development and when he completed his PhD, he went to uh, the United Kingdom, got experience there in the commercial environment, and he extended his interests in uh, formal software engineering, and uh, now came back to New Zealand, and uh, again, has a very good and high-flying job now in a New Zealand company. Okay, this is our project on diffuse optical tomography. So, a measurement technique we try to improve and try to perfect. The idea behind this is if we get our well, tissue for instance, if we look through here, through my body, we can't see anything that's really happening on the inside, but we can see this glow and this glow has lots of information in it and we try to make use of this information. And There's a technique that's called diffuse optical tomography, which is used to measure, for instance, uh, breast tissue and identify and try to find cancer uh, cells or cancer tumors in it. Another technique would be related to uh, brain activities, brain oxygenation and similar things. So what we try to do is, traditionally this technique is used by placing a light source like my laser directly in contact with the tissue, putting a detector directly in contact with the tissue and analyzing the results and developing pictures of the tumors for instance in the breast. What we try to do is have it fully non-contact for the laser, so we shine a laser at our tissue from a distance and also we use a measurement tool, our camera, that measures the results of this laser exposure from a distance. The big advantage there is it is much more comfortable for the patient. It's no contact. It's totally uh, non-invasive. We have optical radiation which is not invasive and uh, not as uh, well bad as uh, x-rays for instance. Uh, would be perfect to be used in a clinical environment. So if we have enough separate, if we have the separation from the human subject and our measurement system, that would be much more uh, interesting and much more convenient for patients to endure. And uh, I can see there if we can get that going, and perf oh, we have we have uh, proven that it works in concept. There are a few issues we have to optimize. Um, to be, it would still be a while for it to be a real uh, clinical tool, but I can see that it would be a very nice uh, thing for a practitioner to apply and use in general mammography screening or other uh, non-invasive tests. What I'm passionate about this one is uh, it really comes from uh, my 
experience, not experiences, but watching Starship Enterprise. And uh, I forgot the name of the guy, but the doctor there, I think it was Scotty or something, he had this uh, magic wand which identified immediately what diseases, sicknesses people had. And uh, what I tried to develop for the last 15 years is a magic wand. I point towards some biological material or tissue and I get information about what's happening on the inside. And that's my big dream for the future. And hopefully we will get it soon. In general, I have uh, great feedback from my students on uh, the stories I tell. Uh, on our evaluations, uh, student evaluations, I get regularly comments that they like my stories. And uh, a very common story I try to include in my courses is uh, our lightning test lab I worked with or in, in Hanover. And lightnings are a very exciting thing because they blow up everything. And unfortunately also the labs usually blow up. And uh, if you give stories like that to the students, they really enjoy it when things uh, do not go right. And uh, in this lab a lot of things did not go right. A lot of things blew up. Enjoy that. That makes uh, the classes more interesting. And one of my uh, teaching areas is electromagnetism and electromagnetic theory, which of course uh, is related to lightnings and uh, blowing up things there, they always enjoy. This is the main ingredient of my other idea, which is uh, the Blu-ray cell counter. This is a typical, in this case, HD drive, but similar to a Blu-ray uh, drive pickup, so that's what actually reads the information of uh, the disc, Blu-ray disc. What we have in here is three lasers, sophisticated optics and all in a little package and this one cost me $15. This one would be the first step to make a cheap cell counter. So instead of the $50,000 laser we can use this very cheap unit and attach it to our flow cell. What we need in addition then is some sophisticated electronics to read out the information. And this would make it a much cheaper, uh, much more widely usable device. And also, if we can make it fully self-contained, we don't need any operator input and units like that can be dropped somewhere in a river and if they stop working, they break down. We don't need to worry about replacing them because they are so low cost. Also, say councils or other uh, organizations wanting to monitor at many different locations have the opportunity to buy something like that at low cost and instead of buying one they can buy 20.